got several projects going on all at the same time here, but this here is the trailer uh, hub that's going on the car trailer. We've cleaned up the bearings uh, in a regular solution and inspected them, and we did find three bearings that were starting to go bad. Um, now I'm not really sure if the camera can pick up this part right here. That galling there is the chrome or the hard surface coming off the bearing. There's one there. Here's another one. I'm not sure, like I say, I'm not sure if the camera is picking these up. And here's the here's the other the next one. See if we can get that. But that's where the the hard surface is coming off and would ultimately fail if it was left alone. So we've got that. We've found them. We have other bearings uh, that we know are good. So now it's, it comes as a matter of packing bearings. There's several different ways to pack bearings. One of the ways, uh, here's a very simple uh, packer. Uh, if you have wheel bearing grease and a grease gun, uh, works very, very simply. Just put your bearings in there. Put this uh, uh, actually goes this way, and put your your cover on top. It squishes the bearing in between, and then when you uh, put grease into it, it pushes it out. Does a pretty good job. And uh, something that I've had in my toolbox for, for a number of years. And uh, works pretty good. What I've used the most, though, is, uh, is this packer here. You take and uh, basically, you fill this with grease. This is with wheel bearing grease. Put your bearing tapered side down, put this back inside, and you just squeeze it. We, uh, a lot of times, you just take and put a rag over it, which is what I'm going to do now because it's been very cold here lately. And uh, so it greases it. A little bit stiff and then you just stand on it and that forces the grease up through you can see how the the grease has been forced up through the bearing very quick easy easy job that way and the bearing is packed The other way, you, you fill your palm with grease and then you push it in this way. Uh, we've done that when we've had to, to do uh, some field expedients and uh, where we had to change a bearing out in the field for some reason, out in the, on a road, road call or something of that nature. These hubs have already been cleaned out. And I always put a thin film of grease inside the hub. And uh, and this is the, the seal. to take a little bit of grease while I'm at it and lubricate that the lip of the seal and flip it over 
This works for all sizes of bearing. Put that in. Like I say, we just put a rag over it, keep the dirt out of the shoe. And just step on that, check it, and make sure that the grease is up and around. Just make sure that there's lots of grease in there. These bearing packers do a really good job. Basically that is that is it as far as take your wheels off and pack it. Of course there's easy lube uh, axles now and uh, but which work okay. I'm not going to say anything bad about them. Um, but the, uh, the best way that I have found you know that these wheels are packed properly and what we'll do now is we'll take it out, put it on the on the trailer, and we'll show you how we adjust the brakes, and uh, uh, and how we put the bearing, set the preload on the bearing. All right. Well, this is uh, getting ready to to put that drum on, and one of the first things that I usually do with all this has been wiped down clean, so. I always like to have a coating, you know, just I know all this, these surfaces here, you don't have to use a lot, just, just a little bit, make sure everything is moved there. Now, this is how we, how I adjust the brakes. It saves uh, the trial and error. This is a little tool. I think you can probably still buy them. This one's probably 40 years old. It goes in. It measures the inside of your of your drum. We also know how big the drum is. And if it's been turned beyond its useful life, and then you take and you go over your brake draw your your shoes and see if and you can adjust your shoes. You adjust your shoes to fit the inside of this. This is the inside of the drum. This is the inside or the outside of your shoes. And you go down here on your adjuster and you can adjust it. Uh, we use a pair of pliers uh, because we know that this is all freed up. We, we made sure that it was free and it's lube. And uh, then from now on, we'll go from behind with a brake spoon and adjust it uh, to make sure that everything is up to snuff there. So we know our shoes are going to be properly adjusted this way. And then we slide our drum on making sure to keep everything nice and square and you see how that has that proper tension onto it. So now we put the bearing in, our washer it goes against that and now is a good time to find the hole where the cotter key is going to go, rather than try to find it later. And 
for this you can use a uh, a spanner wrench or you know just about any kind of wrench that'll fit it now we tighten it up just a little bit more than what it should be and then back it off now this is going to be a little bit too tight on our brake shoes so we'll adjust that now that it's seated uh, we'll adjust that and go from there all right this is just a little bit too tight so this isn't the proper tool to do it with but you can do it with a screwdriver you just go in the back and there's a an adjustment wheel and this is very close so we'll just go a couple turns on that and you see how close that was that was very very close I had it just a tad too tight and uh, that's all we did was just back that off just a little bit these are a little rubber plug that's in the back of it we'll put that back in and once we uh, line our hole back up here like I say Set that preload. Put our cotter key in. Bend it over. I don't have a, uh, a set of uh, dikes with me right here. I'll back that off just a tad more. And this is something that I probably will have to adjust after I've driven it. Uh, and they seat. Once they seat in, uh, they more than likely will be a little bit loose. So we'll have to do some adjusting on to them after that. And uh, so you can hear the brake shoe dragon. That's pretty close right there. Now our, our, there's no play in the drum, obviously, and our preload's been set. And uh, so the only thing that's left to do is to put our cap on, um, and we got to trim our cotter key, put our cap on and go from there. All right. Got a pair of side cutters. And one other thing that's kind of a pet peeve with me is I hate dented caps. I always take something that's a little bit bigger piece of pipe. In this case, it happens to be a socket, and uh, tap them on that way. That way, these don't get dented. If you dent them in far enough, they're going to hit the bearing or, or hit the cotter key, or not the bearing, but the the end of the shaft or the nut, and it just looks better. These, uh, this has already got a little dent into it from somebody else, but. Uh, that's uh, that's your that's how you do your your brakes on your uh, on your RV uh, your travel trailers uh, fifth wheels anything that has these electric brakes on to them they're all basically the same there is hydraulic over uh, electric and a couple different other systems out there but this is an all electric surge brake or not a surge brake an electric brake and uh, that's how you do them.